Hi guys, this is Niels. Welcome back to another episode of how to incorporate logic into your live show. In this part four, we're gonna start putting a logic session together. So let's get started. Let me show you how I create these stems, which is the first part that we need to do. You could do it with a just a TV track or just a single stereo track but it doesn't allow you the flexibility of uh, adapting the session to different situations. So here I have a mix session from my song When I Think of You. And it's already pretty well organized. I got the bass, that's going to be one stem, then there's going to be the drums. Um, just to show you that right away, I'm just going to basically just solo the drums. Everything that a drummer would play, these are drums. Uh, they're already in folders. These are the cymbal overdubs, the toms, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to bounce it out from the top to the very end. I'm going to make sure that I uh, delete the fade. If there's a fade at the end of the song, let me check the ending here. Because I do not want uh, <coughs> a fade for my live tracks. Yeah, it has a nice clean ending right here. I learned over the years that when I record a song, even though I'm planning to put a fade on it, um, on the record, I'm always going to record an ending for it, which is very helpful in this case. So that's it. Um, I'm going to reduce the, the, the reverbs and effects a little bit for the live tracks because they're going to be played back in the room. So there's already going to be some effects in, in the club, in the hall that you're playing. So I'd rather have them a little bit more on the dry side. And then I'm just going to bounce this puppy. Um, I'm going to bounce some 16-bit 44-1. Um, because I don't need the high resolution for a live thing. Create a folder that I call when I think of you. When I think of you. Uh, I like to give the tempo is 112 because I'm going to need that. So I have that in the name of the folder. And then uh, when I think of you, drums. Okay, and bounce. And I'm basically going to repeat this process through all the different instrument groups. Think of each stem being a, a musician. I'm using drums. I'm using bass. I'm going to make a stem for the main keyboard, the Rhodes. I'm going to make stems for rhythm guitars. I'm going to make myself a reference lead guitar stem um, to learn the song. Um, percussion, I personally, since I'm playing with Oliver Live, he plays the congas for sure. So I'm going to have a, the congas separate and then maybe the other little toys. I might keep them on a separate track. So sometimes I like to keep them in. Sometimes I just mute all of them, but I like to have them separated. Um, and then the secondary keyboard parts, which would be pads, little synth swells, and, and those little ambient effects. These are going to be the stems that I'm using. And you can see this takes quite a while. It's a little bit of a tedious process. It takes me like... Uh, 45 minutes for a song to do. So if you're doing a bunch of stems, you expect to sit there for a minute. So this is almost done here. And then we're just going to go down the line, do one at a time, until we got all the stems exported. So now that I have these stems created, let's put them in the session and uh, create a song for this. So I start by creating a new marker. Let's do this right here. Um, the double pound sign is Logic's placeholder for a number, which is important. We want to keep that. Um, I think of you. I get rid of this, but I do want the number there. Now we said the tempo of this new song was 112, so I create a new tempo. There we go. And this is going to be 112. Right here, you see the temple. Okay, good. Now we're going to bring our tracks. Go to the beginning of the region, and then we put everybody in here. First is my drum track. Throw that guy in here. Uh, then my bass. Then my 
my roads. I have a lead guitar reference. I put that usually up there. Um, then what else? We got the conga track. We got the secondary percussion track. And we got what's my next track here? Rhythm guitars and pads, synths. Synths go right here. Okay. Give me two bars pre roll, like right there. And then I move everybody to this position. Move the playhead position. Here we go. All right, then let's play that back. I think my bass. Now the levels, and this is important. Um, I used to do region automation for the levels. This way I can move stuff around without having to cut automation, follow me. So this stays with the region. See the roads is a little loud here. There we go. Sounds pretty good. All right. Now, next thing is I gonna move over my clicks, and all I need to do is go in here, copy these. Copy, go to beginning here and paste. And there they are. And you see how they beautifully line up with the new tempo. So that's my click. Make sure it goes long enough so it covers the whole song to the end. So this song really ends right here. So I want to give the drum a click up to there and only up to there. I don't want to have him here click after he's supposed to stop playing. So make sure this is long enough so the click doesn't drop out in our two bars before the song ends. The other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy these guys over. All right, you can create this with a pencil tool, you know, and then name him. I just, once you have them, you can just copy them and edit the length. So this is actually a verse here that starts right there. There we go. And I think it hits the chorus right here. I'm gonna put the melody in there so it just have a record. Still chorus. Here we're gonna hit the bridge. I uh, have a bridge, let's create a bridge thing. Okay, okay, here we go. And this is gonna be called bridge. Bridge. And then here it goes back to a verse. Okay. And that's here we're coming to a breakdown chorus. Let's break, break, put that in there so I can cue the band. Hey, break down! Give it different colors, it stands out.
so here I might want to create a little section maybe for a little solo here uh, I'm making this let's make it four bars see four bars make sense for it I think I need to make that eight bars long. Yeah. So that's the section now that I can open up, I can jam all I want, I can go out in the audience, I don't worry, this is just going to loop I don't know, as long until I come back. And... Alright, so here we have our song. You see, these are all the tracks, drums, bass, roads, congas. We got the click folder down here with the count off. The hi-hat as an alternative or the verbal count off and then the click that gets looped bar by bar. This is a lead guitar put in here for reference. We have our song title up here and we have a little created a little section for a solo. So after I start playing I have this bounce over here and this is ready to loop. So this little section is my solo. jam as long as I want until I tell it to go on and finish up the song. Now it gets interesting. Now next in the next lesson I'm going to show you the little tricks what these switches do and there's another switch in here that I created and there we need to dive deep into the environment. The dreaded logic environment. I'm gonna hold your hand through it and show you exactly what to do, how to get this going. This is important. These are controls that will actually then let me <coughs> uh, rearrange my set list without having to redo the session. Uh, it will make logic stop and wait for me for the next song. It will prevent me from accidentally going back to the beginning of the song in the middle because I forgot to press uh, the button to go on to the next loop. So all that good stuff. Um, and um, so stay tuned for the next session. It gets really deep and interesting in the next one. All right. Take care. It's Niels. See you then.